So uh, we have a question here from Glenn. He's asking, can you explain the difference between a Reg A fund and the other types? Mm -hmm. So besides accepting accredited or non-accredited investors, are there are there other differences? Um, well, with our funds, the the accredited investor fund is technically an exempt fund because you're only allowing high net worth individuals. We make them prove that they are an accredited investor um, and they they have to qualify one of two ways. They can either qualify having a million dollars in assets, excluding their primary residence, or they can qualify through their income. So if it's through their income, it's two hundred thousand dollars a year as an individual for the past two consecutive years or 300 as a married couple. Um, outside of that, the Regulation A fund, you or Regulation A plus fund, I should say, you don't have to prove that you're accredited, but the maximum you can invest, so they do cap it because the Securities and Exchange is looking out for people that are non-accredited, is they say that the maximum that one individual can invest is either going to be 10% of their estimated income or 10% of their assets. So those are your biggest differences. But as far as the way that the two funds are managed within our organization, they are managed the same. They both have 75% of their fund balance in the loans we originate, and then also 25% of their balance in the real estate in our local market. So those are your biggest differences. Um, and then, of course, minimums are different. The, yeah, I was, I was going to say the minimum was probably a, a big, a big. Uh, it's a huge well. difference. And, you yeah. know, we went back and forth on this. I was not a proponent of of setting a minimum at a thousand dollars because it is a small dollar amount. However, I have to say a lot of people really like that because even if they have more than a thousand, I mean, this is a relationship, right? You know, yep. I, 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 I tell people, yes, you're investing in the fund and the types of yields, but more than anything, you're investing in our company and secured investment corp. And mm -hmm. that is the type of relationship that takes time. And so a lot of people like the fact that they can start with a thousand dollars, you know, maybe wait, you know, a quarter or two, see how it's working for them. And they typically come back and invest more. And then, you know, for your people that really have small dollar balances, like small IRAs or really old 401ks, that's a really good opportunity to get those types of accounts that are more, you know, typically smaller balances to work. So um, our minimum on that fund is a thousand dollars where the other one is 50,000. Yeah. 50. Now I, I think you hit the, the nail on the head when you said trust. I mean, one of the things when you're a fund manager and you've done it any any length of time, you realize you are not selling a pref plus a you know a split above that pref to people. You are selling yourself and your track record. You're selling that trust factor. So, and you all have been doing this for how long? You said ten years. We've managed funds for ten years. Yeah, we've yeah. had three funds. Um, our first fund was written as a five year fund, so technically we had to wind it down after five years. Um, and so what we did was we opened up our second fund before that fund wound down. So a lot of the people, yep, you know, that were in over here, yep, they just rolled over into the second fund. And so yeah. that was a good opportunity for them. But, um, you know, I tell people you're investing in us and our team and the, the team that we've, you know, put together here, which I'd like to take all the credit for it and say it's me, but it's not. I mean, we have a massive team behind us from an acquisition team to an origination team, underwriting servicing, mm -hmm. accounting. I mean, it is, it takes a tribe to run these funds. And, um, you know, I think that's important to understand. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that uh, it's one of like the, the tenets that, that we, we, we live by here is uh, we do what's best for our investors, even to our own detriment. And we have the battle scars to prove it. Yep. Uh, and I know for a fact that you and Lee Arnold share that exact same sentiment. Well, and that's why we align ourselves with people like you. You know, yeah. we want to be associating ourselves with good operators. And, you know, as well as I do, if you weren't doing that, you know, you would not have a fund anymore. Um, and, you know, it doesn't always go as planned. It's not a perfect, you know, formula. But, you know, if you have the right team behind you to react and pivot when these challenges come up, you will be a successful fund manager um, and you will be able to continue to give those yields. But being open and transparent with fund members and investors is also really important. It's something I, I preach <laughs> to mm -hmm. my team. It's like, Hey, I don't care if it's good or bad news. You have to be transparent with them. And er 
I can't tell you one investor that's not understanding when there has been a challenge, but when you start not communicating, not being transparent, that's when you're going to be in some big problems. So um, when you we, have the perspective from, from the lending side, when, when a borrower does that, I mean, you, what, where does your mind uh, immediately go when, when right. a borrower ghosts you or goes dark? Yeah. We all, we all think the worst. I mean, that's, yeah. that's just human nature. Yep. Yeah, no, I we're on the same wavelength as you guys. <laughs> gotcha.